Welcome to Andy's Garage, I'm Andy Phillips. Today we're going to talk about the difference between a pending fault code and a confirmed fault code that's stored and saved inside your car's computer. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, so we can understand the difference between a confirmed fault code and a pending, I just want to give just a brief description of both. For the most part, what a pending fault code is, is a code that's generated, but it's not a consistent malfunction that's generating that error. It can be just a, a random glitch. Uh, sometimes it can be a sensor or a component like a spark plug or a spark plug wire that maybe had just a, a temporary malfunction. But basically what happened is it's not a consistent malfunction to where your computer sees it happening in, in more than a couple drive cycles. So it sees that it generated it. It's still pending. So what it does is it will flash that, that it picked up that there was an error or a malfunction, but that it's still waiting over the course of a few more drive cycles to see if it manifests itself again. Now, that doesn't mean that you can ignore those. And a lot of times what your vehicle will do when it picks up that malfunction or that, that pending code, that's also an alert for you to look into that. So a lot of times if you've got a diagnostic reader, uh, one that, you, that will track the pending codes and give you that alert, and pretty soon we're going to go out to the vehicle and I'll show you the different ones. And we have uh, some videos that I've done in the past, some product reviews if you want to dig in deeper to those. But what you want to do is you want to look into them and you want to make sure that it's not a reoccurring issue. Now, a lot of the times a pending fault code will not cause the check engine light to be triggered. Some, In some cases it will, but what it'll do is it'll trigger it and then you might see that check engine light come on and then all of a sudden you'll see it go out either within a few minutes or the next drive cycle. And basically what will happen is the computer will then, it'll see that pending code, could be a malfunctioning sensor, could be some kind of a random glitch. It'll generate that code because something wasn't performing properly. Sometimes that check engine light will come on after a couple more drive cycles. If it, if it starts to determine that, wait a second, things are working good again, it will then turn that light off at that point. That's what a pending one is. It's pretty much there just as a preventative measure, letting you know that something happened. It's still analyzing it to see if it's consistent. Now, when you get into a confirmed fault code, or as some people refer to it as an active fault code or an actual fault code, usually what that is, is after the few more drive cycles, the computer then is reading that and it's getting the information sent back from that sensor or from that component and it's saying, wait a second, this malfunction is reoccurring. This is definitely an issue. Then it'll generate that confirmed fault code. And if you have a diagnostic reader that specifies confirmed versus pending, it will list it as a confirmed and a pending. So you can see kind of the, the history as it was getting to that point. Now, once you've got a confirmed fault code at that point, now this is a real, real issue. This is a, either a sensor or a component, a misfire, whatever the case may be that needs to be addressed needs to either have the part replaced, something needs to be fixed at that point, and that check engine light will be on consistently. If you go to get your emissions test, if you're in a uh, state like I am that requires that, and they plug into it and they see that you do have a, a stored or a confirmed or an active or an actual fault code in your system, you will fail that. You do need to get that corrected. A lot of times with the pending one, that will not be an issue because that will then, your computer will pull that back and it won't be an issue for you since it, it didn't reoccur after um, several drive cycles. So that's pretty much the difference between the two. Let's head out to the vehicle and I'll show you what we're talking about and then we'll come back and we'll close out this video. Go ahead and connect your OBD2, either your Bluetooth or if you have a scanner. For this particular Bluetooth, if you want to see a product review, highly recommended, you can do so via the link shown above. Go ahead and connect that before we turn the car on so we can check the car's computer, see if there's any pending codes. Go ahead and start the car. And, okay, we're, we're connected. You can see there's no check engine light, so we know that there's no uh, confirmed or, or current or active error codes. But let's go ahead and see if there's anything pending that may need to be addressed. Pending fault code found. P0420. Catalyst system efficiency below threshold. Bank one. Okay, there you heard it. The cool thing with this app here, Torque Pro, is it'll actually speak to you. So you're basically hearing your car's computer talk to you as things are going on. So it did confirm there is a pending one. So let's go ahead and let's click here. 
Here you can see that the pending fault code has been registered, so pending will come up like yellow or greenish, where if you have a confirmed one or a current one, it's gonna be red because then that is a, a real issue. Now, if you have a handheld scanner and not an OBD2 uh, Bluetooth that goes through an app, a lot of times that'll display with the actual fault code followed by the P. Go ahead and take a look. From the main menu, it'll show you the current faults and the pending underneath. As we click through and cycle through, you'll see we have the P0300 code. We also have the P0303. Those are your current codes. Then you have the pending one shown now, which is giving you the number followed by the letter P, indicating that those are pending codes. If you want to see more in depth about using that kind of a scanner and, and how to address a check engine light, you can check out my video via the link above for that as well. So the next step that we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and drive this car for a little bit, let it go through a few drive cycles, because with this pending code, as we've already talked about in this video, these are more preventative. So it's good to, to check for them, because if it is something, you can look into it. Right now, it's only pending, which means it could be a glitch or just a sporadic error that was generated. So what we would need to do now is we need to now drive the vehicle a little bit through a few drive cycles. If that code manifests itself again and it starts to get a reading of it being consistent, then it'll then move it into a confirmed or a um, current or active or whatever you want to call it fault code, which then it is a problem that needs to be addressed. So right now, we are getting the pending. And once again, if we look here, you can see that there are no check engine lights on. And as mentioned at the beginning, with the pending code, sometimes they can generate the check engine light, and then if it goes through a few drive cycles, there's no issues, it'll take it off, or it'll move it to the next level where it'll confirm that that fault code is legit, and therefore the light will come on. So let's go ahead and drive it a little bit and see what happens. And there is the check engine light on. So we know that the computer is um, sending a code. So now with the scanning tool attached, let's go ahead and get a reading and see what the codes are. Check fault codes. And as you can see here, this is a current fault code, which means that this one has pretty much been confirmed. So this is not a pending fault code because this one's red on this particular app. Depending on your device, it may appear different. If you're using a like a handheld scanner, a lot of times it'll have a P after it, or it'll say pending on there if it is a pending one. If it doesn't, then it is confirmed or an actual, or as this calls a current. But basically, this fault code here for the P0420 powertrain, which is your catalyst system, usually pertaining to your catalytic converter, this run here has been confirmed, which means that it's gone through a few drive cycles and it keeps registering the same fault. So therefore, this is, this is a valid fault code. Now, if you are getting this, this P0420 for your catalyst system, you, a lot of times you can correct that by cleaning your catalytic converter. If you want to see how to do that, you can check out my link uh, above on how just a, kind of a quick way that you can do it. You can check that out. Okay, well that pretty much wraps up this video on understanding the difference between a pending and a confirmed fault code. Um, I hope this video helped you out. Please send me any questions, any comments. I would love to hear from you. As mentioned already in the video, if you want to see more in-depth videos pertaining to the product review of the OBD2 Bluetooth sensor, or if you want to see my video about how to handle a check engine light when it comes on and it goes a little more in-depth on on doing the diagnostic reading on that. You can check those out via the links that were shown during this video. And also I will have also uh, thumbnails at the end of this video that you can click on to dig in deeper if you wanna take it to the next level. So as always, I appreciate all the support. Please like this video, please subscribe to this channel as I'm constantly posting new content and I'll see you next time.